Bat fans, today we are looking at how we can add XY coordinates in QGIS 3. There is a built-in method and a slightly more fun method that we can use. And we'll look at both. An old friend of mine got in touch, Susan, who I have not seen for far too long. Susan works in Southern Africa and I do not. There is clearly something not right about that. If anybody has any jobs going in South Africa, please let me know. So Susan is looking at cheetahs and was given a KML file, .kml, which is Google Earth's or Google's keyhole markup language. And this layer was sent to me, so I can add this layer in. I'm just going to go to add layer, add vector layer, and I'm going to navigate to where I saved it. And this is looking at cheetah sightings. So this particular cheetah, Tandy, has been seen in these places. So let's add Tandy to the map. Close that. There is where Tandy has been seen. Now, if I use my identify tool, I'll just switch that on and click on one of these. You can see all the different fields associated with this particular feature. And these are pretty standard for KML. So if you do get data coming in KML format, you'll see all these odd things like extrude visibility. These help Google Earth or Google Maps to draw these layers. They're not really necessary when you're in QGIS. But now that Q can just bring these in and visualize them straight away. Now, what Susan wanted to do was to get the locations of these particular points, so the x, y coordinates, in order to do some analysis afterwards. Now, just to get some context, I'm going to bring in Bing Virtual Earth and just reorder. There we are. So there we can see on Bing where Tandy has been seen in and around this area. Very good. Now, in order to add the geometry, I'm going to go to my processing toolbox. And if you are wondering how to do something in QGIS, there's a lot of inbuilt tools and the processing toolbox is a good place to start. So I'd like to add the X, Y coordinates for these points to my attribute table. And if I just type in add, you'll see under vector geometry, we get add geometry attributes. Our geometry is a point those attributes likely going to be x, y coordinates. So I'll double click that and there's our input layer Tandy. And you can see that we've got EPSG 4326, which is WGS 84. And we're going to calculate it using the layer CRS. So our output coordinates or the added coordinates to our attribute table are going to be the same EPSG as our input layer. Uh, the added geometry information, um, I could save that to a new file or just keep it temporary. I'm going to keep it temporary for now, so I'll just run that. And that is done. Close that. And we have a new layer called added geom info. Now, if I go up to open the attribute table here, we have all these fields that we saw through the identify tool. But if I scroll to the right, you can see we now have X coordinate, Y coordinate, and Z coordinate. And these are all in EPSG 4326 or WGS 84. That's quite cool. Now, if we did not want to use that tool for some reason, but wanted to use something else, we could calculate these using our field calculator. So I am going to open our field calculator. I'm going to create a new field. And our new field is going to be called x coord. And the output field type is going to be a decimal number and it will be a double. Now, field calculate is quite good because it can just calculate the field automatically. And what I'd like to calculate it with is the geometry of this particular layer. And if we look for the little dollar sign, that means that it's a variable and X is going to be our X coordinate. Over in the right hand side returns the X coordinate of the current feature. Double click that. Output preview, 24.9303. That looks good. OK that. And if we check our attribute table, there is our new field and it's populated with that. 
So let's do that again, just for the Y coordinate. So I'll create a new field and call it Y coord. And I'm going to go for decimal double. And I'm going to go back to my geometry. And notice that we've got other things in here like area as a variable. We've got geometry, length, all sorts. So this can be quite useful for calculating things. And dollar sign $y is going to be our y coordinate. Double click, output looks good, preview, OK that, and we have our y coordinate. Now notice when I'm using field calculator, it automatically turns on the editing mode. And that's what we'd like to happen because we are editing this attribute table. So I'm just going to save my edits. That's all good. Turn off editing. And we have our coordinates. I've added them twice just to be super thorough. And that's that really. So looking good. It's always fun traveling by map to new places. And so please keep the questions coming through the comments if you have any QGIS queries. And in this area of South Africa, look what I found. No way, it's Subscriber Town. If you'd like to become a permanent resident of Subscriber Town, you can do so. All you need to do is hit the subscribe button. And subscribers have been plentiful recently, so thanks very much for that. And if we look just down the road, it's right next door to Likesville. Not much going on in Likesville, so could do with some more residents there. Just hit that thumb and you will be an honorary resident. All right. Well, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, keep traveling by map and exploring what you can do with GIS. And don't forget, happy mapping.